Hey guys, welcome back and I'm pretty sure I'll save a game, let's make sure I did. Uh, yep, yeah. got 25 minutes, let's go through this open door. Hmm, outside a window. I'm already seeing this, it stopped staring. Just like the letter said, the stone has finally stopped. I don't know if Master's seen this, but I must go and tell him. Master? Master? Are you in there? Oh, the door is unlocked. Master's lying on the couch face down and asleep. The tea and snacks are brought in half an hour, still sitting on the desk by the door untouched. He's still sleeping. Seems to be sleeping an awful lot recently. I can even remember when I saw him awake. Should I wake him? Quietly, Master. The snow. The snow stopped. Master, the snow stopped. Master! The snow stops! Wake up! That's strange, he's sleeping a little too soundly. Oh well, that's fine. We'll see the snow has stopped when he wakes up. Walk towards the door, but I noticed something strange. The tea and snacks I bought in half an hour ago are still sitting on a desk by the door. There's a teapot and a cup and a tray and a plate of pumpkin cookies. I was put five cookies on my plate because it looks better that way. I came in earlier. Five cookies were still very exactly where I put them. They're gone now. I take the lid off the teapot. There's nothing but wet leaves inside. Turn around and look at Master. He's barely been out of my sight and still sleeping. Weird. Where do the snacks go? Has the ghost taken my cookies and left for tea? Pick up a cup and carefully examine it. There are no tea stains on my cup at all. I realise something. For the past few days, the cups have always been clean when I come to collect them. It's almost like they haven't been used. Never been used. I walk back to the couch and lightly tap on Master. No response. Push him harder. No response. I even pull some hairs off his head. Still no response. Oh no, is he? So a possibility has come to my mind. If we were human, I would assume Master's sick or even dead. Could those things have happened to a god too? Or is the story of a vanished cooking and tea? I'm not sure what's happened. Master must be in some sort of trouble. Must wake him up no matter what. But how? Huh? Isn't this... Put a pen out from underneath Master. This is one we used to work. Used to work. I've seen him working a few times, but somehow I have an idea how to use it. You know, just a servant. Master once mentioned we were both gods. Maybe I could... No matter what, to give it a shot. <gasps> I don't even really got a profile, does she? Probably not, unless it goes there. I was standing in a room with Master Willie. He was lying on a couch. He was sound asleep. How badly I wished that he would wish over normal and mock me off for tasting snacks I'd made. Please don't wake up. What? Why did it work? You must be the only one who can use it. But I, I, I can feel something about to happen. I'm so close. What am I missing? Maybe I should check Master's room one more carefully. I might be able to find some clues. Master is dumbass. Not working. Alright, maybe we could use some noise to wake him up. Post on the um, someone he likes. No, it's not time to be wondering about that. The drawer's locked. Master was locked. Something very important inside. I don't have a key. How can I open it? I'll try it back again. I tried to open the drawer. Must be something very important inside. It was locked. I tried to open the cabinet next to it. It wasn't locked. But there was nothing inside. I realised there must be something very important inside the drawer. There's an old newspaper and picture frame inside the drawer. The entire newspaper, including the front page, is about one thing only. Why would Master lock a newspaper inside a drawer? 
Headline on front page reads, Changing the fate of humans, a new revolution in global civilization. Headline article is accompanied by a photo of two people. One is a middle-aged man. The other is one is a middle-aged woman. Each of them is holding a peculiar box in her hand. As we article and write a photo. Take a six-sided die. The chance of getting any number between one and six during one roll is at one and six. On average, we should get a number we want six tries at most. Now, if we every each possibility in this world from the past, present, and future could be represented by a number, and if we had a die with as many sizes or possibilities, if all the die is fast enough, we should be able to change everything. It's the only theory proposed by Dr. Wang Wuhai during the internal summit conference at Artificial Intelligence five years ago. The time his presentation was widely mocked by experts, but professors described it as pure lunacy. Some critics even accused him of being deranged. Some of his fellow Chinese colleagues considered him to be a disgrace for country. However, a month ago, Dr. Wang and his wife announced that based on their theory, they developed two prototype machines that are literally capable of anything, named them omnidimensional probability generators. Omnidimensional probability generators? Wait, what, what just happened? Actually, I think I've seen this before. While the entire world is still stepped talk about their announcement, Wang had an exclusive invitation only press conference. I heard the reporter were fortunate to have been invited. Able to report we only witnessed three astonishing capabilities of the so called omnidimensional probability generators. During the conference, Dr. Wang started by doing a small demonstration of telepathy. Volunteer was invited onto the stage and separated from Dr. Wang by a screen. Ben wrote down a number on the blackboard, somehow they both wrote down exactly the same number every single time. But according to Dr. Wang, it wasn't really telepathy. It was a result of Dr. Wang's changing the number that the volunteer had written down by operating a generator. Yet none of the audience, not even a volunteer himself, had noticed anything unusual. Second demonstration, Dr. Wang locked himself inside a sealed room, separated from the audience. Many of us asked to write down the appearance of a volunteer from the crowd who had yet been chosen. After Dr. Wang had finished writing on a whiteboard, a volunteer was selected from the audience. It was a young man with a ponytail. His hair was dripping with green paint. The young man explained earlier in the day he was walking past a building on his way to a conference. The painter's high above, above a building accidentally dropped a bucket of paint which landed on his head. He was feeling very uncomfortable due to dripping paint. He was asked to borrow a pair of scissors from a staff of a conference. He got off his ponytail right there on the stage. The staff memory all with Dr. Wang had already written on the board. He read, Male! 175 centimetres, lean, short green hair. Everyone present gasped, including the young man. Dr. Wang had written down short black hair instead. It did mean the young man would not have been doused in paint earlier. Or maybe someone else would have been chosen. The press conference ended, everyone in utter shock. Although we were only able to write witness two simple demonstrations, we absolutely have no doubt that the invention of generators is powerful enough to completely overhaul the accept accepted logic of the world, perhaps the entire universe as we know it. No prizes for physics, chemistry and medicine, which are typically announced in October, have all been awarded to the Wangs in advance this year. However, Dr. Wang and his wife released another statement declining the prizes. Your state of no further information about the omnidimensional probability generators will be released to the public. Therefore, even though the news of machines eventually spread for the entire world, we still have no understanding of the principles of its capabilities. During the press conference, Dr. Wang and his wife revealed that their reason for creating the invention is nothing to generate greater benefits to mankind only to fulfil their own wishes. So far many nations, led by the United States, have expressed their stern concerns with the Chinese government. The leaders from these countries claim the invention is extremely dangerous, may have potential to eradicate the entire human race. They insist that the machine, as well as all related research, must be destroyed as soon as possible. The Chinese government has yet to respond to the demands. At this moment, a very limited knowledge of the dimensional probability generators, the only information is we are able to confirm that Dr. Wang has named a project Will. We built two prototypes, Will 0 and Will 1. Unsubstantiated information suggests both prototypes might have been equipped with highly advanced artificial intelligence and modelled after a couple of son and daughter, respectively. Children Wangs died three years ago in a traffic accident. A photo of children seen on the right. A smaller photo was printed over the far right of a slot article, the same as the one inside a picture frame. Elder brother Wang. Wei and younger sister Wang Miao. They were both killed in a traffic accident three years ago. They tragically died at the ages of 14 and 12, respectively. Ah, wrist, no, wrist, um, my head, it hurts, no, it's...
Well, it might be bad if you sing me a song. What? Well, what song? Well, I want you to sing Preacher Sang. I only care about you for me. That's too embarrassing. Are you okay with just one of all the songs? All the songs are too embarrassing. How about this? You give me a kiss on my cheek and a big bubble will sing for you right here. Not my hand, my face here. What's the matter? The book is gone. Did you lose it at the zoo? It's okay, I'll get you an even cuter one. No, I want to go and find it. Wait, don't run so fast. Be careful, watch out for a car! The car! <laughs> Doctor, we're about to lose a girl. It hurts. Oh, no. What is it? It was an accident. She was hit by a truck. She lost too much blood on the way here and she's barely breathing. Blood pressure 40 over 70. Injector of adrenaline. Prepare for transfusion. Brother. She's losing consciousness. There's no heartbeat. Charge 200. Clear. <laughs> no change. One more. Charge of 300. Clear. Damn it. Step aside. Heartbeat stopped for 52 seconds. Was there anyone else with her? There was a boy. He died in the ambulance. Damn it. Time of death. 10.28am. Where am I? Dr. Wang, we did it. You did it. All readings normal. No exceptions encountered. Hi. How are you, my little darling? Who am I? You're my miracles. Miracles? That's right. I remember now. I remember our real names. Omnidimensional probability generators. Instruction number three. All descriptions of requests must be objectively accurate. That's why I couldn't wake him. I got his name wrong. The real name is... Well... I'm actually going to save here mid-episode. I don't often do this, but I will do it this time. Put down a pen. He wakes up. I don't think he'd be able to wake me up. I don't think I'll be able to fall by you again. It was such a long time, no less. I'm sorry. How long has it been? Well, let me think. Counting from the day we were born, it's been. Uh, one hundred million five thousand eight hundred sixty-nine years, eight months, and three days. I think I need a little more time. I'm still quite confused. By the way, what happened to us? Oh no. I mean, what happened to the brother and sister? They turned out to be okay. Well, turned out, isn't it? Desirely accurate. They were always okay. Oh yes, I remember now. We revised history. They were never in an accident, right? That's right. We can't really resurrect someone who's died. We can change what happened to them. That's our primary function. That's why Dr. Wang invented us. He wanted to save his children. That's wonderful, isn't it? He accomplished his goal. Yes, you're right. Dr. Wang was a great father and maybe an even greater scientist. But he was also too selfish. He must have realised this too. Yeah. The outside the window is not really an illusion, is it? That's what the human's world, also known as Earth, looks like now. Am I right? Yes, Earth has become unhabitable for many human beings. Not as humans, it's unhabitable for many living organisms. Earth has become a dead planet. When did it become like this? Not long after putting you into hibernation. Was it because of a war? I seem to remember a lot of people fighting to be in possession of us, and lots of people died because of us. Yes. After you were put in hibernation, we went from one owner to the next countless times. Some of them even used us as tru truly horrifying things. But that's just reality. As long as people knew about our existence, they would never be one to exploit us. Snow in the summer, earthquakes with no warning, intangible urban legends. Everything supernatural that happened to the world was because of us. Well, um... Could we prevent ourselves from ever being found? If they found us, they should be able to change things so it wouldn't ever happen. Example, just like how we never, oh, I mean, the siblings never got into the accident because of us? We did, you tried, you remember, don't you? We became another cycle. Someone would always find us. As long as we existed, as long as there was people in the world, they would always find us sooner or later. Everyone would realise our power. It was always just a matter of time before history repeated itself. Then, how about we raise ourselves from existence? For example, 
We can make it so Dr. Wang never invented us. About that. Have you ever wondered if Dr. Wang had only invented us for his own use? Why would he tell the entire world about us? Well, he didn't want to show off. Perhaps. But mostly he did it because he knew once he'd fulfilled his wishes, we would cease to exist in this world. Cease to exist? Why? If his children never died, Dr. Wang would have no reason to invent us. And we would never have even been invented. But we're still here. That's a problem. If we use our power to erase our existence, how could we use a power in the first place? This is a paradox. That's why we cannot erase ourselves. At most, we don't make ourselves forgotten. But merely forgotten was not enough. People would still eventually find us. As far as I know, the only way to erase ourselves or to kill ourselves is to exhaust our energy. Our energy consumption is irreversible. You're telling me we don't have much energy left, do we? Is that why you've been sleeping a lot recently? Yes. Plus, I've had a little energy left. That's why you were able to wake me up. Furthermore, I'm looking more alive now because you shared some of your energy with me. The total amount of remaining energy, however, is only going to be keep going down. Once my energy is completely depleted, not only you'll be able to wake me up. So what you're saying is the only way to change our current circumstances is to use up our energy before we're found again? In theory, yes. However, just like we can't simply erase our existence, we're not able to waste our energy away as we please either. Wait, isn't this too pessimistic? Is there really no other way? Everything happens for a reason. If we could modify the key events that led to the apocalypse, shouldn't we be able to change the future? It's easier said than done. For a long time, I've been looking for a way to return to the world to normal. That's what those letters are for. Those letters were all written by humans a long time ago. What I've been trying to do is keep changing the past events. Those people are real? I thought these letters were made up by you and always were just fictional characters. They really did exist once in this world. They are all dead now, of course, but before the apocalypse, they are all alive and well. I think these letters are true stories and events from their lives. So whenever we modify our letters, the events that happen to them are modified as well? Yes, except we are not changing anything that is happening now. Always stories happened a long, long time ago. So is that how we function? When modifying letters like this? It demonstrates the mention of a newspaper seems a little different. Technically, we use our power by activating the probability generation mechanism for accepting a request, hence changing the objective reality. I only told, told you we arranged this text to change a casual relationship between because I wanted you to believe we are gods. I intentionally have obfuscated work and process. However, we do it, the essence of our power remains the same. It's exactly the same as rolling a die. A die? You mean six sided cube with different numbers? Yes. You got a number each time you roll a die, the chance of getting a specific number is always one in six. One specific number, the number of times you would need to roll a die to get a number would be six on average. Also, dice with more than six sides. For example, where some games in the world would use a dice with twelve more sides. But die, roll, roll, die we are rolling is this world. It's only a metaphor is easy to understand, of course. The true principle is much more complicated. Depending on the complexity of requests, the number of sides will change as well. Most requests we handle to require more than six sides. I can go beyond 100 million. Our goal is basically trying to roll a specific number from a die. Only obtaining that number can request be granted. However, the more die sides a die has, the lower probability of rolling a specific number becomes. But die with only two sides, the chance of getting one is 50%. And average, you need to roll it twice. A die with 20 sides, that's become 5%. Every time we roll a die, it drains our energy. The more we roll it, the more it costs us. Cost like an expense? Sort of. Although the way we measure cost is different. Cost to us the changing event is only related to the probability of said event. Ring more. Let's say someone wants to make a life or death decision by flipping a coin. I never want to win the lottery. The chance of preventing death of a former is 1 in 2. Well, that's it, it's 1 in 100 million. Of course, there are many other ways to prevent his death, but our design guarantees will always select the method for maximum probability. A probability in the and 2 is very large. In this case, it will cost us a lot less to save a life and award someone a huge amount of money. Furthermore, the more complex the request is, there's usually more people in more events involved. As interaction between the people and other things have become exponentially more complicated, the lower probability gets from the higher the cost to us. I think I understand it now. Although, how come you know all of this? Is there some data you haven't restored to me? No, once you saw the newspaper, all your data was restored. It's part of Dr. Wang's original design. Not only do you and I have different personalities, we also have our different functions and different data stored in our databases. The logic of that design is choices to make us behave more like our personalities. You mean Dr. Wang thought I wasn't smart enough? I never said that. How'd you get through all this by yourself? Did you ever feel lonely? Of course. Like I said, I've been trying to change the past this whole time. So by changing some mundane events, so people start to believe in gods. 
They will pay to us more. We will get more and more opportunities. I was always hoped to find a tiny ripple in the past. Perhaps always past events were too insignificant. No matter what I did, the future remained unchanged. At first, I set up faith for myself. After doing the same thing over and over again, at any progress, I began to doubt myself. That must be why you sound so irritated by them. So I can't help but think that you have done so much and so well. Best proof is that they're letters from the humans to us. <laughs> you think so? However, as powerful as we are, we're not real gods after all. Our choice are always very limited. Sometimes I doubted myself too, wondering if I'd just see everything so clearly. But it was why I woke up after changing some of your data. Why did you become a god? I thought that maybe you might be able to bring out some new possibilities. But in the end, perhaps it doesn't matter how we approach everything. Maybe it's why it's simply less to end up like this. Or because of our existence. You're such a... Such a dumbass. Why didn't you wake me up sooner? Why did you have to carry up all this? No one ever knows for sure what the consequences of the decisions will be. No one really knows how the power to predict the future. And we don't know for sure what will happen to the people who wrote to us. Therefore, every decision, every choice, there is no absolute right or wrong. Nevertheless, these decisions and choices are still full of meanings. Because even though they do not always lead to a wonderful ending, every experience becomes a part of humans in a space of memories. Memories. Just like what we're going to have. We're going to have these process memories too, right? Yes. As a face of humans, we can help them solve some of their problems. In the end, it's not us who gets to decide their destiny. The past their lives are affected by so many factors. Sometimes things will be decided by pure luck, more often than not. They are determined by their sheer will. The only ones who could decide their own fates were humans themselves. Well, if you're right, or maybe Dr. Wang had foreseen what would happen afterwards. That's what I thought too. If he wanted to make us disappear, then there must be countless ways to do so. But he didn't. Maybe it was because we still had some faith in this world. Faith. We were Dr. Wang and some expectations. We've messed up it all by now. No matter what we do, this world is not showing us any signs of change. You haven't noticed, have you? Look outside the window. What is there to look at? I've been staring at the same view for over a hundred million years. The snow. Huh? How? When? When did this happen? When did the snowing stop? What did you do? It wasn't me. It was you. You made this happen. The last letter you beset process before falling asleep. A man named Pi picked up a metal box after an accident. The snowing stopped after that. A box he picked up. It must have been us. We did it. We changed this world by changing things a hundred million years ago. It proves that what you've been doing is actually working. From now on, you don't have to do this all by yourself. I'll be here by your side. Even though we're the only ones left in this world. No. If humans stop writing to us, we... We have to go back into the past ourselves in person. Go back to the past? Are we talking about using a time loop feature? Yes. Do you still remember his note? It says something about a time leap. It says it's unverified. Could it really work? W wouldn't it be dangerous? No, it's not dangerous at all. Although this feature is exclusive to me, I must be the one to perform it. Wait. Did you just touch your own horn? Were you lying again? I know you too well. Every time you tell a lie, you touch your head. <sighs> well, you got me. It's very dangerous, isn't it? It's a little dangerous. While our functional mechanisms resemble rolling a die, we also hidden implications to time reversal. In other words, imagine the number we want is 1. We cannot guarantee we'll roll a 1 first try. If we don't get a 1, we reverse try and roll it again. Until we get the number we want. When we reverse time, this entire world, including ourselves, still stays at the exact same temporal spot. What we really do is reverse time, is overwrite past events to a modified version we've chosen. Meanwhile, neither we nor the world actually go back in time. If we physically went to a past with two different timelines, we're going to flick to each other. According to Dr. Wang's research, doing so might result in us being stuck into a gap between timelines and server, connect server connections to this world completely. If that happens, the only way to bring us back would be to send us a signal from the real world, summing this from that purgatory. Which means if we ever do time loop feature, we might lose our connection to this world forever. I see now. But wait, you just mentioned something about summoning us from the real world. What if one who stays here? I mean, one who stays to make sure we are summoned back. We can have a point. Wait, you mean... Yes, we can go separately. One of us go first, we can go after the first one arrives. This way you can make sure we are both safe, right? Well, you're right. Sounds like a plan. It's a good plan. Excellent, let's do this then. What happened? Why everything around us go suddenly change? This house looks the same as one we should live in. It's only an illusion. 
It's been over a hundred million years our old house crumbled into dust long ago. Since I don't have anything else to hide from you, there's no need to waste my energy in maintaining it. Makes sense. But well, now we can know how we turn to the past, let's go. Although, where are we going back to? Can you go to plan? Probably right after a young man mentioned picked us up. But we're still alive back then. We can even hear him sing. <laughs> we don't have to tolerate our constant beeping anymore. I want to go visit Jimmy with superpower. Brother. Brother, thank you. Idiot. What are you thanking me for? I've been awake for this long, but I really am happy. This thing would say the word fluffy to you. Is that why you chose to look like fluffy? Brother, you've always been a big liar. But in the end, you're still you. One who stayed by my side until the end. Thanks for staying with me so long. You stop being so polite. It's not like I have anywhere else to go. Alright, now we should get going. You should go first. Once I get there, if you don't hear from me, don't forget to send the summoning signal. I don't want to be drifting with a gap between timelines forever. Don't worry, I'll see you on the side. Later. I should be one saying thanks. As well as sorry. I've stopped touching my head for while lying for a long time. I intentionally made those horns just so you would notice them when I touched them. I knew this day would come. You're so smart. How could I afford you again if I wasn't fully prepared? However, I promise this isn't the last time I ever lied to you, my little sister. There's no such thing as a gap between timelines. Dr. Wang's theory about time and space. But there's only one unique world in which we live. There are no parallel universes or timelines. Therefore, it is not possible to go back separately. It's actually very simple to return to a world as a past state. As long as we supply a huge amount of energy. I've known this for a long time. I've always known this is the only possible way left. But I just couldn't bear leaving you alone. That's why I've been dragging my feet for over a hundred million years. Perfect world really can't exist for me. If you're right about one thing, every decision, every choice is still full of meanings. Therefore, it's my final decision. I have no regrets. But, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry I couldn't be with you until the end. I'm sorry I couldn't be with you in a brand new world. I'm going to erase your memories of me, so you won't remember me anymore. In a brand new world you always hoped to see for yourself, I'll be your favourite as Mumphus Cakes. Your beloved Booker will be all kinds of people you wish to meet, but it just won't be me. However, I truly believe that a brand new world of you, the world you always wanted to be a part of, will be a wonderful world.
It was an urban legend. Walking into a dark alley, an empty alley in the middle of the night, you might hear the sound of a young girl singing. Follow that beautiful voice. You might see a small cabin with its lights on, deep inside the alley. A 14 year old girl and a white young Sam is living alone inside. If you pray to a girl about your troubles, she might hear your plea and change your fate. For the next day, when you walk into the alley again, there will be nothing but a grey wall on the end. Excerpt from Modern Urban Legends. Thank you so much for helping him complete this journey. After I depart, you can choose to remain in this old world and become a new owner of this house. Clothing from a wonderful ending, you may continue helping the humans, but neither will zero nor will one respond to any of your decisions or questions. I will save a wonderful ending. I'll save it there. Uh, I don't want me open. I want. Let's continue that, shall we? I want to check, see how it looks. Loading the wonderful ending. Uh, we do have a um, confidential thing for Will. Will Zero, red. Possessed with possess personality of memories of Wang. Cooperational principle, kindness. Special feature, energy sharing. Blue, possess, possess personality and memories of Wang Wei. Uh, protection. Um, data avoiding prioritized energy distribution, all that sort of stuff. Profiles. Yeah, they get their own cube, it seems. Yeah, this has been Will. A wonderful world. It's got a sort of bittersweet ending. Not everybody can be happy all the time. And decisions we make are all important. But thank you very much for watching, guys. I'll be back next time with another, like, another visual novel type thing. I've got an idea what it could be. I kind of think about it beforehand, decide before I decide what to record. But as ever, thank you very much for watching. Have a wonderful day. And remember, the decisions you make are always your own. Treat them with respect. And remember, but you haven't got a cute girl changing your decisions for you all the time. 
So until then, bye bye.